Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And we finally have an official announcement. It's just not the manager. And um, Burnley have announced a brand new, the actual wording of it is important here, a brand new first team assistant coach. Obviously, we reported on this a couple of days ago. A lot of people were saying, I can't see that. It's a bit strange. And we agreed. It is. Why would you appoint what is essentially an assistant manager without a manager? And again, we said at the time, maybe this means the manager is close. Well, apparently not. There's been reports come out today on Friday that would suggest that it is completely separate to the announcement of a manager. But like I said, Burnley have made an official announcement. Henrik Jensen, the Danish coach who was at Swedish club Kalmar FF up until just a couple of days ago, um, has been officially announced by the football club as our new assistant first team coach. And like, uh, coach sorry. Uh, and like I said, I feel like the wording is important here because does this mean we're going to go into a head coach rather than a manager kind of setup? And the fact that they have named him as the first team assistant coach rather than assistant head coach might mean that there is space for somebody else to come in with the manager. Again, this is just me thinking out loud. I don't see how that would work personally. You know, you know what the saying is, too many cooks spoil the broth and all that. Um, but I feel like with the wording of it, it just it just screams that this might be a little bit different, especially the especially the manager route. There's been some talk recently from journalists and connections at the club that Burnley might be going down the head coach route. And I think this does look like that will be the case. But we may or may not go into that later in this one. Um, this episode, obviously, we'll see. But the club, like I said, made the official announcement yesterday, quite late on Thursday, actually. I was just getting back from the pub after watching England and this woke me up because obviously England sent me to sleep. Burnley Football Club said we are delighted to announce the appointment of Henrik Jensen as first team assistant coach. Welcome to Burnley Henrik. So it is official. A lot of people, like I said the other day when we reported on it, whether it be on Facebook, Twitter or, or, or on YouTube, we're all, all saying, can't see that being true. Why would the club do that? But of course, here we are. We have an assistant, I nearly said manager then, an assistant Sorry, first team assistant coach. Like I said, I think the wording might be important, but I guess we'll find out in, hopefully, the next week when the manager, whoever that may be, um, is appointed. We will have more on the manager later in the show as well. Um, but just to go into what Burnley said on their official website... They say, Burnley FC are delighted to announce the appointment of Henrik Jensen as a first team assistant coach. The 39-year-old Dane has joined from Swedish side Kalmar FF, having previously managed Dave, Danish club Mitch Deland. Definitely got that wrong. In a caretaker capacity. Jensen started his managerial career in Denmark in charge of women team Fortuna Hoyring before continuing his career across Scan Scandinavia with IFK Norkoping. And link up things FC. Tell you what, Scandinavian names are not great for me. Uh, speaking on his arrival at Burnley FC's training ground, he admitted he can't wait to get started. It's been a dream for me to coach in England. English football fans have always fascinated me, so I'm thrilled to be here. I'm passionate about football. I've loved football from an early stage and started coaching from a young age at just 18 years old. So I've been coaching for 21 years now. A lot of coaching experience, but also a lot of years ahead of me as a football coach and looking forward to contributing to Burnley FC. Uh, he went on to say, conversations with the club, the people here, it just felt like a good fit after good conversations. It just felt like we fit together. I followed this amazing historic club, the playing style, the facilities at Turf Moor. I've seen matches and the atmosphere just seems amazing. To go out on the pitch is going to make me extremely proud. So yeah, it does seem a little bit strange to appoint the assistant before we appoint the actual manager. But like I said, I think that will make a lot more sense with the next bit of information that's out there a minute. Now, this came from Alan Nixon and he tweeted a link um, as he does to his Patreon, uh, and the link says, Burnley's surprise move for Danish coach Henrik Jensen was set up weeks ago during the reign of previous boss Vincent Company. Jensen quit Swedish side Kalmar, who were aware 
that the Claret's interest and the fact that their boss wanted to move is, is worded that horrendously. Aware not the Claret's interest. Anyway, however, Burnlet started the chase and when company was still their manager and fears had grown that assistant Craig Bellamet would leave. Jensen needed to get a work permit and the move was processed, while all the drama went on at Turf Moor as company quit for Bayern Munich. The appointment is not related to an incoming manager who will now inherit a member of staff when he is named. Owner Alan Pace is still speaking to candidates and due to make a decision soon. Obviously, that's, that's on the manager. So, Nixon... Take it with a pinch of salt, usually I will say for Nixon. It's quite funny, actually, because when this Swedish newspaper reported about Jensen coming to Turf Moor, Nixon rubbished it, said, I don't believe this Swedish thing. And now he's doing reports like this without any irony anyway. Um, I actually quite like Nixon, even though he's blocked me. I think he gets a lot of stick, and I think most of the time he's right. But when he's just going around blocking people and rubbishing other people's stories, then you can understand why some people... I think he's a bit of a gimp, basically. Um, but it's interesting because I had heard when, you know, two or three weeks before the end of the season that Bellamy was leaving, obviously couldn't say anything. Um, so this does link up with that sort of rumours that were going around because it wasn't just me. Other pages were messaging me saying, have you heard this about Bellamy? I was like, yeah, 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 I've heard it as well. And it was on Up the Clarets. It was pretty much everywhere on on on, uh, on Twitter about two or three weeks after I'd first heard it. So I think it is pretty common knowledge now that Bellamy was about to leave the club, but then with company leaving, it changed it. He obviously now wants the manager's job, whether he gets it or not. Hopefully we'll find out in the next few weeks. But it's it's very interesting, to say the least, that we now have this assistant manager. Well, sorry. First team assistant coach um, without appointing a manager. But like I said, it makes sense when you hear what Nixon had to say that we've re we've recruited him to help company because Bellamy was leaving. But I was... When people were saying it yesterday to me on Twitter, basically saying like, we've probably just recruited him before company left. And I'm like, surely we just... If that was the case, surely we'd just sack it off and we wouldn't bring him in anymore. But someone made a good point to me today saying that if he's under contract and he's already signed his contract, then I guess there's not much we can do. And I guess that was the scenario. I thought we'd, I think, I think we've probably got him in. He's signed a deal or signed a pre-contract and then everything's changed and we're like, do we still want him? I mean, we might still want him. He might, he might be a very, very good assistant. First team assistant coach. When he gets it, well, he's here now, but when he starts working, when the players are back, he might be very good and a great asset to the club. I've spoke to some um, Swedish fans of Kalmar, I think a, a couple of Danish lads who who follow him and are reporters over in, in, in Denmark and, and Sweden and stuff, and they all say he's great. They all say he's a really good guy. He's really down to earth and he will be an asset to the football club. So fingers crossed he is. And yeah, it's certainly an interesting way of doing things. It's an interesting dynamic, but at least with the Nixon report matching up to all the rumours about Bellamy leaving, it kind of makes sense as to why he's here. Speaking of Craig Bellamy, in the manager search, we do have a new favourite and it is Craig Bellamy. Craig Bellamy, according to the bookies, is now the favourite, the odds on favourite, by the way to be the brand new Burnley manager when it's finally announced. Now, again, take the bookies odds with a pinch of salt. I just know a lot of people like to use them as like a gauge. I think I think we've shown on this one that the bookies don't really have a clue. I think Bellamy is now the sixth different favourite. He may have been the favourite already, to be fair. I'm not sure. But it's a new favourite again, and I think it's the sixth time we've had a new favourite. Ruud van Nistelrooy, as recently as yesterday, was... I think it was definitely odds-on on Wednesday. I think He was still the favourite yesterday, but I think he was odds-on favourite yesterday. But now Ruud van Nistelrooy has drifted out to 3-1, to one, and Craig Bellamy has been backed in to 1-2 to two on... Well... 2-1 to one on 1-2, one to two, you know what I mean, to be the new Burnley manager. Now, again, I think this is just a case of fans and other people and punters seeing that we've brought in a first-team assistant coach and thinking, well, that must mean they're promoting the guy that's already the assistant manager. Like I said, I don't think that that is the case. Well, we know that isn't the case now. It's been linked, it's been reported that the, the, the new guy coming in is not related to the manager's search, so... It may still be Rude, it may still be Carlos Corbran, it may still be Rossini, it may still be Scott Parker. It won't be Frank Lampard though, but we'll get onto that again. 
in a few minutes, but I think what people have done, they've seen that Bellamy was about 20 to 1 a couple of days ago. They've seen these reports about this new assistant, sorry, this first team assistant coach. They've seen them reports and, like I said, thought, well, that must mean their assistant manager's been promoted. I don't think it means that, but I think that is why Craig Bellamy is now the favourite anyway. But the current market is this. Craig Bellamy is 2-1 to one on. Ruud van Nistelrooy at 3-1. to one. Then a bit of a gap to Bo Henriksen at 10-1. to one. Carlos Corbran at 10-1. to one. Rosinha at 16-1. to one. Scott Parker at 16-1. to one. Kufientes at 20. Lampard at 25. Thierry Henry at 33-1. to one. And then Henrik Rydström, who is now drifting out to 40-1. to one. I think he came into about 10s, 12s a few days ago, did Rydström. He's drifted all the way out. But pretty much everybody has drifted there, if, if memory serves me correct, apart from Craig Bellamy, who's been backed in. But as we've said plenty of times on this show, take the bookies odds with a pinch of salt. Right, now, and sticking with the manager search, it was actually quite a lot in the manager search yesterday, so I'll try and get through it all in one bit without waffling and, uh, and going on too long, but it was reported yesterday morning by, uh, sorry, Dutch newspaper Telegraph. Ruud van Nistelrooy is, and the, the words that they used were, very close to joining Burnley as manager. Now, I say that they use that, that the stuff going around on Twitter was that they used the words very close and being used as well by Dutch by Dutch Twitter accounts and Dutch journalists. Like they were resharing that and saying that they were saying he's very close. When I went on the Google Translate of the article, they did say that he was close. I think I can't remember what the exact wording was off the top of my head. But the, the, the exact words very close weren't in that Google translation. Obviously, languages are different. They work in different ways, right? So they, I think when Google translates something, it translates it to the exact word, whereas it means something else. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the stuff going around on Twitter was that it was very close. And there was a lot of people reporting it in uh, England as well, reporting that he was close to a deal. And, you know, we'd known that he'd been talking to Burnley for quite a while. He'd, well, he'd, well, he'd done the interview. We've said that a couple of days ago that he had been interviewed by Burnley. But then it came out by um, Matt Scrafton at the Burnley Express. We love Matt here on Turfcast. He was, of course, on the Journal talk show not long ago. But he did say, a deal to bring in Ruud van Nistelrooy to Burnley is not close, contrary to reports in the Netherlands. So whether he's close or not... Who knows? I think he's the number one choice at the minute from what I've been told. Pace wants him, but other people in the decision process want Bellamy. Again, take that with a pinch of salt because you can put one eye get heard right down at the bottom. But uh, yeah, a, a, a weird one with Rude. He was coming, then he wasn't. Well, he was close, then he wasn't. I think Matt obviously does have good connections at the club, better connections at the club than what the Swedish newspapers do. But maybe the Swedish newspapers were speaking to Rude himself or maybe Rude's agent and they were saying that he's quite close or maybe there's just been something lost in translation somewhere with the articles from um, the Netherlands. Did I say Sweden again then? I think I did. Anyway, from the Netherlands. If I did, I meant from the Netherlands. Um, some more good news is that The Athletic are reporting that Frank Lampard is no longer in the running to be the Burnley manager. So obviously not many of us wanted Lampard. I do feel a bit harsh on Lampard and I do feel eventually he will get it right somewhere. I just don't want us to take that chance because he could end up having another disaster class. His next role, he may not it may not go well. I, I do think he will have learned a lot from his experiences at Derby, Chelsea, at Everton, and he will be a better manager for it. But... We are in a position where we need to bounce back and we need to bounce back within the next year, hopefully, or two years, which is when the first set of parachute payments runs out and it then goes to a sort of a, a, a lower fee. Um, and I don't think we'll be taking that chance on Lampard. So that is good news for me. I actually don't mind the guy. I quite liked him. I loved him as a player. I thought he was a brilliant midfielder, but he's not quite what we want for yet, for now, sorry, as manager. And also the athletic, obviously... Andy Jones, who was also on Journal Talk, he said West Brom's Carlos Corberan is also a candidate to become Burnley's manager. And again, we've said something like that recently on this show that he had been interviewed, or reports were out there that he, that he had been interviewed for the Burnley role. I like Corberan, and I would like it if we got him, but I can't see us doing that. I, I genuinely can't see us doing it. I, it annoys me that I think they're going for the out-of-work managers because it's cheaper. 
even though I like Rude, and I, I think I would actually prefer Rude over Cobra, just to completely contradict myself or anything, or what I was just saying, but I can't see us paying the compensation fee to West Brom for Carlos Cobra. And that annoys me in a way because I feel like there's a whole world of managers out there that we're not even looking at, right? We're just closing ourselves to... We're limiting the number of managers that we can get if we are going down that route, which I think it's looking like we are. Um, according to BBC reporter Shamoon Hafez, Burnley have been in talks with Ruud van Nistelrooy and Scott Parker. So we knew about Ruud van Nistelrooy. There was already plenty of reports out there about Ruud van Nistelrooy. We knew about Scott Parker as well. So again, that just all adds up to everything and it all just makes quite a lot of sense. And all the reports do seem to be not contradict each other. They're all singing from the same hymn sheet, essentially. So looks like to me it's probably going to be one of Ruud van Nistelrooy, Craig Bellamy, Scott Parker, I think that's it. I think one of them three. Again, at a guess, just thinking out loud, no inside information. But that's it for this week's, uh, sorry, today's, well, this week's and today's. This, this is it for today's Claret's Daily News. And of course, that's it. We don't do it at the weekend, so that's it for this week's instalments of it. You'll notice today with it being Friday, I've done it a little bit late and I think I'm going to do it like that every single week from now on because last Friday when I did it, I put it out in the morning at 8am and loads of stuff broke in the late morning, early afternoon, which I then couldn't talk about until Monday. So obviously on Monday, I'll do a weekend roundup, but I think on Friday from now on, I'll do it a little bit later so I, I, I can include everything that happened on Thursday and everything that happened on Friday as well. But let me know what you thought in the comments of Burnley announcing a... First team assistant coach, Henrik Jensen, on Nixon's report of that being done for quite a while, on Bellamy now being the favourite, Lampard out of the running, Burnley talking to Cobran, rude, is he close, is he not close, who knows, but um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about all the stuff we've talked about today, and I'll see you again on Monday.